Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Here I am in MATLAB 2015. I am going to show you uh, basically a checklist uh, as you build out your first Simulink model. I'm going to do my best to make sure uh, we, we include everything as best as we can to avoid any errors uh, because it's not an easy process to go through. Um, so right here you have your Simulink browser. Um, I'll bring up the model. This is the canvas. So what we have, uh, as with um, any particular Simulink model, is the most basic you can get. We have our inflow, we have our chart. We don't really need the chart, but I use the chart for a lot of things I'll show you in a minute. And some kind of output, usually uh, the older Simulink would be like a uh, a, uh, a scope, but you can also use charts uh, using a MATLAB guide, uh, using um, basically uh, um, uh, what, what I call them, basically uh, guide charts and plots uh, on the on the outflow. So this is your three-step process: your inflow, your logic, and your outflow. So basically, this is a constant block simple stuff give me any value you want you can have as many of these as you want that you can and uh, put into typically what I'll do is a chart and the output of the scope which is this guy I've shown this before lots of times but really where everything uh, all the activity takes place is in um, my uh, MATLAB function um, maybe these states I might have some transitions back and forth. This is the most basic I can use uh, for now. And uh, basically, what we got here is we have two states. Um, we have our default transition where the uh, flow, where everything starts right here. Um, we have a default uh, custom. I call it custom, but MATLAB M function. In this case, we call it test, and it's just going to do some kind of calculation. Um, and uh, essentially, it'll be some basic output of some kind, um, maybe the delta or something. But uh, how that works is uh, let me just see what we got here. Um, so we have our input or sorry, our input, which is this delta, and the output, which is the um, the, the uh, output. So this is an import right here, output um, for, for the chart. Uh, let me show you that in a minute. So basically what we've got here is we have our function, MATLAB function. Um, now, let me pull up the, um, the most important part of this whole thing. Is what we call a map a model sorry a model um, explorer which is this guy right here you can do that by uh, um, coming out of here and just go into view um, model explorer all right so where things get kind of hairy as you build out your model you'll start to build out structures and 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 objects so my case what I've got here um, as I said before, we have our, our chart right here. And th these are the objects that, that's contained in the charts. So we have um, uh, our basically our, our input and output. Now, there's various ways to create this. Um, and, and you got to do it as cleanly as possible because you, you, you could easily get into a lot of trouble by not following this. Um, so you can override this, uh, but you just go add data and then whatever the data is that you want to add and the type. So with either uh, the delta, you can see it is inheriting it from Simulink because this is now in state flow. This, part, this chart is a state flow chart. So this, this, this whole thing Simulink but I, I mentioned this before in other videos that this is now a state flow chart. 
So the state flow chart and its objects are totally separate and isolated from the Simulink um, model. So it's so that you have to dis, uh, define your different objects. So we have, as I said, our states, the in the money, out the money, uh, our function. And not only that, um, but we also have our um, objects. Now, as I said, in this case, it's um, imported, um, inherited from Simulink, okay? And that's done through the Simulink uh, wizard, uh, symbol wizard. Um, and that's probably the cleanest way to uh, generate uh, these objects because that wizard will um, define everything for you. And it will also define what port you go to, the size, as I said, it's inherited. Um, and then we also have the output. Now the output is based on, um, again, what we put in our chart. So in this case, we have uh, our output, test, and then uh, whatever our input will be. And then we also defined this object here, this delta as well. Okay, so hopefully that will somewhat help you out. Um, so you have your output and input. And you can also, on the scope, you can define constants, local, so if you have further um, uh, variables, let's say in the function, you define it as a local um, parameter. I haven't really tried out data store memory. I haven't tried out. Um, so far, this is how it looks. So we also have our transitions, which are defined here and here. Um, basically, what those are are these transitions right here defined by the square brackets. So this as a transition, this is a transition, and we also set the conditions of those transitions. Um, let me just try to pull them up side by side here. Now, as I said, it's, it is really confusing, but once you get used to it, uh, it kind of makes sense, but it's, it's getting your head around this. So you can see here we have this transition, delta equals uh, 1, uh, delta equals negative 1, um, right here. Um, now we've also got this guy right here, which is, uh, I believe, I can't remember what they call it, but it's, 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 it's in these uh, curly brackets. And that also gets defined, because that's going to call our function. Now one trick that really messes me up pretty good uh, is... These objects here are called delta, delta, out p. Um, I was trying to also have them within the uh, the um, MATLAB function itself, but what I found was that if I called this argument input argument um, as uh, just delta, I get messages saying that they would conflict with these other um, objects here. Uh, in, in my state flow chart. So if I just call this output, um, yeah, you have to have everything as a unique name, basically. And it's best to have a, um, a, a naming convention as well of some kind. So when you work with your MATLAB functions, always make sure that your output, uh, whatever you're returning, and your input argument are unique from within the uh, state flow chart and most likely also will conflict with uh, the Simulink model itself as well. So always try to keep these all unique and I'll have to figure out some kind of good naming convention. Um, and uh, I think that's pretty well it. Um, now you will be able to, uh, if everything's all looks good, you'll be able to run the simulation, as you can see here. Um, so it did run, and uh, let me just see if there's the uh, model, sorry, there's a diagnostic viewer, which really um, 
Let me just do this again. So I'll, I'll run the simulation. So I'll clear this log. Okay, so I'll just run it. So you can see it's running, no problem, and uh, no errors have been generated. Now let's go in and uh, put one of these uh, out, these are arguments, and just show, I want to show you how it can conflict with uh, the state flow data are objects. So as I said, um, in my model explorer, we have here uh, these uh, objects called out, out P and with the transitions on out P as well. And it also gets called uh, with that function called, uh, that function called test, as it's called here, test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, uh, just for kicks, call that delta. So we will get a message when we run the simulation that it will conflict. This is really confusing, um, but that's why I'm making this video to sort of try to give a, give, a, give a checklist of what you need to look for when running very basic models and you start building these out. Uh, they can get pretty, pretty hairy pretty quick. So, um, let me see my diagnostic viewer. So, okay, so it says I cannot modify. Oh, okay. like uh, somehow this got locked but essentially what you get is you get some message saying you have to rename one of these values of your delta um, P otherwise it will start complaining let me just see what, what we got going on here so if I try Contents of this editor cannot be modified. Okay, let's see what happens here. Let me show you my diagnostic viewer. Clear the log. Let's see what happens here. It's running no problem. Very strange. Oh, here we go. So there's a message I wanted to showcase is exactly that where it'll say that you have a conflict so one of those have to get renamed and they're in duplicate so that's what I want to show so these have to be unique okay continuing along so as I said I've uh, put everything back the way it was to unique uh, object names including this argument here in the function so uh, if I uh, run the simulation, um, sometimes I just like to clear out these uh, logs here. Okay, so let's see. So it's now working. Um, okay, so everything's fine. Uh, let me see. I've not uh, shown you probably the uh, running the execution of this simulate chart. Uh, I'm not sure what will happen here, but let's just see what happens here. So you can see the uh, blue highlights in the state flow can work, but I just gotta fix up the uh, looping, make sure it's, it's uh, kind of like infinite uh, looping. Uh, all right, so that's all cool. Um, so we know it works, so let's go into the code generation process. So if you come into code, uh, code um, generation options, there's a couple of checklists you have to um, make sure. This is at least for now is what I'm learning. If you're going to generate C++, uh, there's a couple of things you need to understand. You have to uncheck this mat file logging because that will generate an error. Also under the solver, you also, and we'll just leave this, I'll put this variable step as, as an example of what would happen. Okay, 
this. So let me just go back into the uh, uh, options here. Okay, so we're going to generate C++. This will generate an error. So we have our um, our viewer here. I don't think it's doing a whole lot. Let me just uh, try that again. Okay, code generation options. Okay, so I'm hoping that this will kick off our. So we have C. Remember, I've talked about the targets, so in this case, we're using Visual C. Let's see, here we go. So it's going to try to. Aborted due to errors. So we have um, our error saying that the solver uh, has to be a fixed uh, uh, solver, not use, does not support a variable step. So as I sh showed you, that's one check you need to be aware of. Um, so if you come under here, face, uh, so they come under solver here and just put the fix, that will fix that problem. Now, don't get too uh, excited here. Let me just show you this one last um, error message. So if I choose map file logging, um, this should generate its own different error here. Let me just clear this. Okay. Ah. Okay, so we want to build options and then um, build. So off she goes. So it's going to generate an error. Oh, maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. Aborted due to an error. So this case is what I thought was the map file logging is compatible. This will work no problem under C, but when you're trying to do it, generate C++. So if I generate C, that will work no problem. Um, but uh, let's just stick with C++. So. Let me go back into um, that. Uh, so it's under here under interface code generation interface and click this mat file logging. Okay. All right. So we know that works. So we should be able to start uh, building our project, which I'll do right now. All right. Okay, so it's going to uh, start creating the uh, files, you can see here, um, and because uh, it's a small model, it's very quick, you know, some of these models can take a while. So here is the uh, project, it'll get built under this, uh, whatever your file name is, underscore GRT, uh, RTW, uh, that's the target name, and, and Real Time Workshop is the original name of the coder. Um, and simulate coder. So here, here's all the files um, that get generated. Now there's a big gotcha here that I still need to work out. This guy right here, this this make file is really unconventional. Um, I still have to figure this one out. I've got it. I've shown a demo where I can get it working in my Eclipse IDE. You know, get a development environment for C++ and, and was able to um, incorporate calls into the hooks. It's Redis, no problem. I should say no problem, but I was able to do it. Now, <clears throat> here's where it gets really um, tricky. Uh, because I'm using now uh, C-Lion, um, which is another IDE. It's fairly new. I'll just show you this. Give me a second here. So what we've got here is this new uh, IDE from a company called Jet JetBrains, who make ID Idea or Dice call it IntelliJ. Great, great uh, Java IDE, but there's a specific one now for C++. Uh, I bounce this around to people today; they really like it, um, and it will work on. Um, Linux, Mac, and Windows. And it's cross-platform too, because what it's using is using CMake. So that's the tricky part. 
um, is the uh, make file, which I'm really not looking forward to try to integrate with. Um, so I have to kind of play around with uh, CMake and blah, 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 blah. But uh, that's a lot of the gotchas and checklists that you got to be aware of when you're working with just the most primitive um, models uh, for, from Simulink as well as code generating in a C++. I just want you to be aware of all this. Uh, hopefully you'll make notes or whatever, and uh, if, if you're not aware of them, uh, it'll drive you up a wall. All right, talk to you later.